Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. First, I wish all of you a very happy new year. Let's have a very good, healthy and prosperous year ahead with the blessings of God. Flat Lab is one of the rapidly developing technology in Indian building industry. As we all know, Flat Slabs are two-dimensional structural element which is having its thickness less than other two dimensions and flat slab is mainly used where we need the more floor height. Since the flat slab doesn't have any beam, it increases the floor height. We have discussed many basic things about flat slab in one of the previous video. I'll give you the link in the description box. If you want, you can check that video. And in this video, we are going to discuss about what are all the technical terms used in flat slab. For example, we will be having the column strip, middle strip and Panels. These are all the major terms which we use in flat slab. So let's discuss what are all the terms we use in flat slab as per IS 456-2000 and also how do we arrive the bending moment and shear force as per IS code. So without delay let's begin. As per IS 456-2000 class number 31 is for flat slab. In general, it is given as the term flat slab means a reinforced concrete slab with or without drop, supported generally without beams, by columns with or without flat column heads. For this, we need to refer figure number 12. This we have discussed in the previous video, column with column head, column without column head, everything we have discussed in the previous video. A flat slab may be solid slab or may have recesses formed on the soffit so that the soffit comprises a series of ribs in two directions. The recesses may be formed by removable or permanent filler blocks. So here we have the definitions in class number 31.1.1 column strip. Column strip means a design strip having a width of 0.25 L2 but not greater than 0.25 L1 on each side of the column center line where L1 is the span in the direction moment or being determined measured center to center of support and L2 is the span transverse to L1 measured center to center of support. So we have two distances, one is L1 and one is L2. So column strip means design strip should have a width of 0.25 L2 that should not be greater than 0.25 L1 on each side of the column center line. So here L1 is the span in the direction of moment are being determined. So L1 is the span where we are determining the moment and L2 is the span transverse to L1 measured center to center of supports. Let's discuss this with the diagram. Here we have a slab panel. This is L1 and this is L2A and this is L2B. So this is the column strip. So column strip having a width of 0.25 L2 but not greater than 0.25 L1 on each side of the column center line. So here the column center to center distance is L1 and here it is L2. So here we have two span. So that is why it is given as L2A and L2B. So the column strip width is L2A. 2a by 4.25 of this distance and then 0.25 of this distance so this should not be greater than l1 by 4 that is 0.25 l1 so this width of column strip this is the width of column strip shall not be greater than 0.25 l1 on each side of the column center line l1 is the span in the direction moments are being determined measured center to center of supports and l2 is the span transverse to l1 measured center to center of supports. Next one is middle strip. Middle strip means a design strip bounded on each of its opposite side by the column strip. This is middle strip. So both sides between the column strip we will be having the middle strip. Similarly here also we have one middle strip. This is in this direction and if we have one more span over here even we will be having the middle strip in this direction as well. Next one is panel. Panel means that part of a slab bounded on each of its four side by the center line of a column or center line of adjacent span. For example, here we have four columns. So this is one slab panel. Part of slab bounded on each of its four side by the center line of a column. See, from the center line of a column, it is bounded on four sides. So this is one panel. Similarly, we have here one panel and here one panel. So this is how we get the slab panels. Next, let's look into the determination of bending moment 
and shear forces in Platt's lab. As per IS 456-2000 class number 31.3, we have two methods. First one is direct design method and the second one is equivalent frame method. So these two methods will be having many details. So in this video, let's discuss about this direct design method. This method has many limitations that is given in IS 456-2000 class number 31.4.1. Clap system designed by the direct design method shall fulfill the following conditions. So if the slab which we are going to design as per this direct design method has to be satisfy the following conditions. If it is not satisfied satisfying these conditions then we have to go with the equivalent frame method. Let's look into the limitations one by one. The first one is there shall be a minimum of three continuous span in each direction. So here we have x direction as well as y direction. So there will be a minimum of three continuous span in each direction. So in this direction we should have this is one span right from center to center of distance this is one span. So at least minimum of three spans in each direction we should have. So this is one span and here this is another span and this is another span. Similarly in this direction also one span and another one and this is the third one. So minimum three continuous span in each direction we should have. This is the first condition. Next one is the panel shall be rectangular and the ratio of longer span to the shorter span within a panel shall not be greater than two. As we have discussed before we know what is panel. So this is one panel but here the column is a square column and we are getting the drop also square in shape and the slab panel is also square in shape but the limitation for using this direct design method is the panel shall be rectangular the panel has to be in rectangular and the ratio of longer span to the shorter span within a panel within a panel the longer span to the shorter span ratio shall not be greater than 2 so this is the condition which is given in direct design method the third condition is it shall be permissible to offset column to a maximum of 10% of the span in the direction of the offset notwithstanding the provision in B. So here we need to consider the column offset. For example, let's see this column we don't have at this place. Instead of here, we are just moving the column here. So this column has been moved from the center line to here. So there is an offset. So that should not be more than 10% of L2. L2 is the span in the direction of offset. This is the offset direction. L2 is the span in the offset direction. We need to consider 10% of offset direction. So the permissible offset of column is 10% of the span in the direction of offset. Only 10% of the span in the direction of offset. So that is the permissible offset for columns. Next one is the successive span length in each direction shall not differ by more than one third of the longer span. Successive span length. So if you consider here, this is one span center to center and here it is one span. This is the successive spans and similarly in this direction if you see this is one span center to center column center to center similarly here also column center to center we have successive span so that length in each direction shall not differ by more than one third of the longer span if you consider the longer span the successive span length in each direction shall not differ by one third of the longer span the end span may be shorter but not longer than the interior span End span means if you see here at the end we will be having the span like this. End span may be shorter but not longer than the interior span. Always end span shall not be longer than the interior span. Next one is design live load shall not exceed three times the design dead load. So whatever the design live load we consider that shall be less than the three times design dead load. Next let's look into total design moment for a span as per IS 456-2000. In the direct design method, the total design moment for a span shall be determined for a strip bounded laterally by the center line of the panel on each side of the center line of the support. The absolute sum of positive and average negative moment in each direction shall be taken as M0 is equal to W into Ln by 8. So this is the formula to calculate the bending moment. Here M0 is the total moment, W is design load 
on an area L2 on LN. LN is clear span extending from face to face of column, capital, bracket or wall but not less than 0.65 L1. So LN shall not be less than 0.65 L1. L1 is length of span in the direction of M0 and L2 is length of span transverse to L1. See here L1 is the length of span in the direction of moment and L2 is the length of span which is transverse to L1. For taking the values of LN, L1 and L2 we need to follow the classes. These are all the classes which is given to consider L2, L1 and LN. First one is circular support shall be treated as square support having the same area. That means we need to consider 0.886 times D. That is 0.886 times the diameter. To get the square area, to match the circular area and square area, we need to consider 0.886 times the diameter if the supports are circular. Next one is when the transverse span of the panels on either side of the center line of support varies, L2 shall be taken as the average of the transverse spans. For example, here we have L2A and L2B. These two spans are not similar. By considering the two span, so that is what it is given here. Transverse span of the panels on either side of the center line of the support varies. Then L2 we need to consider the average of these two. So L2A plus L2B divided by 2. Next one is when the span adjacent and parallel to an edge is being considered, the distance from the edge to the center line of the panel shall be substituted for L2. Next we need to discuss about negative and positive bending moment how we need to distribute the moment that we will discuss in the next part of this series so friends i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box your comments are always welcome if you like the content hit the like button also share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos thank you for watching